Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ben, and in this episode of the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast, we're hanging out with a woman who's taking the barbecue scene by the, you, you, you know what. Hey family, hope you're well wherever you are and you got that thin blue smoke rolling. In today's episode, we're going to be chatting with uh, Sonia Cattell from uh, Signature Smoke and she's carving up the competition scene at the moment. But before we bring Sonia in, I've got a couple of announcements that I need to just run by you first. First up, I want to give a big thank you to Ozpig for coming on board as our podcast partner for this episode. If you're looking for the ultimate outdoor camp cooker, you've got to go check out the Ozpig range. Anything you can do on a on the barbecue you got at home, you can now do out in the bush on the Ozpig. They've got uh, uh, grills, they've got warming plates, they've got rotisseries, they've got smoker attachments. You name it, you can do it with an Ozpig. Check them out. I've got one in the yard here. We absolutely love it. Now, if you're at the beginning of your barbecue journey, do head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com. We have our free ebook available for you. It's the Beginner's Guide to Real Barbecue. In that ebook, you'll find everything you need to know to go from zero to hero in the world of low and slow barbecue, and you're going to become the king of the grill in your neighborhood in no time. So that's completely free. It was recently awarded by the National Barbecue and Grilling Association over in the United States. So it's a really good read, and it's at smokinghotconfessions.com. And a big good morning to the people that are joining us for our, this live podcast recording in our Facebook group on Facebook, the Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Community. Um, so I, we've been live for not even two minutes now, and we've got over two dozen people here are joining us. So we're going to get lots of comments and questions coming through for Sonia shortly. If you would like to be a part of the live podcast recordings, head on over to Facebook, join the Smoking Hot Confessions barbecue community. Not only do we do these live podcast recordings there, we also just hang out and talk about barbecue. All the other guff is left at the door. It's a really family friendly little corner of the internet where you can just hang out and share your passion with other people. Now, if you are watching this on the replay on YouTube later on, do give us a thumbs up or subscribe and hit that little notification bell. On Facebook, it's all about the likes, the comments, and the shares. IGTV, we love those cute little love hearts. You can pop on there for us. Give us a comment and a follow as well. And perhaps most importantly is if you're listening to this on a podcast app, especially if it's Apple Podcasts, please take a couple of minutes and rate and review. A five-star rating and review helps drive us up the charts. And in the last 30 days, we've been as high as number six on the USA food podcast charts and number three in Australia. And all that comes down to is us putting out the content and then you rating and reviewing it. So that's super beneficial for us and we really love you for it. Now coming up in this episode, as I said at the start, we do have Sonia from Signature Smoke. Now she's based out of Brisbane, Queensland and Signature Smoke are only two years into their competitive barbecue career but are already 150% into the wider barbecue community. So to find out everything that they're up to and, and how they've been going with their competitions, it's time to bring Sonia in here. This is the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions Barbecue Podcast with your host, Ben Arnott. How long has it been since your last confession? Good morning, Sonia, and welcome to The Confessional. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Ben? Thanks for having me. Uh, to be honest, I've woken up with a little bit of a cold, but I've got my, uh, my Chinese honey lemon tea here in my coffee cup beside me, and uh, I'm, I'm good to go. I hope there's some bourbon in there. <laughs> no, there is not. There is not, unfortunately. Um, at, uh, that, 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 that wouldn't do my immune system very good at the moment. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> oh, so tell me, what was the last thing that you barbecued? Wow. Um, if we're talking low and slow, it would be um, our Brisbane comp, which was uh, two weekends ago. Um, but uh, certainly this week we've been cooking over open fire whilst camping. So um, we've had a lot of uh, marshmallow cooking, a bit of damper cooking with the kids. Um, so there was a few curries thrown in there. So a bit of everything this week um, on the barbecue. That sounds incredible. I'd, I want to get to the Brisbane Barbecue Festival just a little bit later on because I'd love to know your thoughts on it. But let's let's dive into the camp cooking there. Do you uh, do you take a barbecue out with you, or do you just uh, like build a ring of rocks and build a fire and throw the meat straight on the on the charcoal? How do you go about doing it? Uh, 
Um, this time we certainly had a fire going most of the time um, in the Ring of Rocks. Um, we did have a couple of barbecues with us as well. So, um, you know, to do, you know, naan breads and nuggets and things like that in the GMG. Um, we had a good old Gosney there for pizza. Um, so we had a few things different going at the time. So, yeah, they were all used. Every, every meal was pretty much hot that we ate that this week. So it's been good. That's flash camping. How do you uh, handle the the power needs for that? <laughs> um, we had a lot of solar panels. <laughs> so uh. There were solar panels galore. Um, but, yeah, no, it was a good week, that's for sure. Oh, that's nice. That, that's good to know that you can power a GMG off of solar panels too. Very handy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Scott was very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so what is your favourite thing to barbecue? Um, I'm a real lamb girl. Um, so lamb ribs are my favorite thing to barbecue and to eat, I would say, and cutlets, um, anything lamb, I just love on the barbecue. I just think it's, yeah, it's very underrated probably for our US people as well. They probably haven't had it a lot. Um, but for me, as soon as, um, I want to do something with lamb, out comes the charcoal and off we go. And yeah, I love it. Yeah, lamb's a really interesting protein because it, it, it can go sweet or it can go savoury. How do you prefer to do yours? Yeah, we probably a bit more traditional in the flavour profiles that we put with our lamb. So it's definitely we use um, a lot of um, rubs by Mafia and things like that and Heavenly Health sources. Um, so, yeah, it's not we don't go super sweet with our flavour profiles on our lamb. Oh, that's interesting. I've actually yeah. come up with a... Um, with a with a honey and balsamic vinegar uh, marinade and then base that I like to use with my lamb ribs, it always comes out really nice. I find the balsamic vinegar kind of cuts through some of oh, that wood. fatty taste in the lamb. Yes, um, beautiful. Comes out really <laughs> nicely, really really nicely. So, t- tell me, how did you first get into barbecue? Um, my partner and I, Stixie, which most people on the circuit know Stixie really well. Um, we're big foodies at heart, so we've always followed food festivals. Um, and we had like Webbers and Bullets at home, and we went to um, well, Brisbane Barbecue Comp. It was actually the 2018 one, no, three years today, I think it was. Um, and we're walking around and looking at everyone's setups, and I basically said to Stix, we could do this. Look at that. There's a gazebo, a table, an esky, and a couple of barbecues. We've got all of that gear at home because we've been doing so much <laughs> at home. Um, he also spent a month traveling the US. Um, and oh, wow. In Texas, yeah, around that time as well. Um, and when he came back, he was hooked. And then after that, we're all hooked. So, yeah, it really uh, hit us all pretty hard very quickly. So how how fast was it then between when you uh, went to that Brisbane that first Brisbane barbecue festival and then when you started competing? Um, we had to wait like it ended up being about twelve months. So, um, and our first comp was quite hilarious. We didn't even read what the rules were. Um, so there was five hand ins and we decided to do three. Uh, just the one. <laughs> Um, we wondered why we came last when we had two fat zeros next to two pro. We didn't do, um, I think it was beef ribs and something else. I can't remember what it was. Um, but we had the best time and I still remember us sleeping in the back of the ute, um, sitting there at Redlands, um, wondering why everyone was preparing the night before. We're like, we don't hand in food till tomorrow. So, (laughs) like, yeah, we, we learned very quickly, um, lots of people around us. That's for sure. So did you do things like cut the cut steaks off your brisket and then just grill them in like 30 seconds and hand them in? No, but I do remember that we had a beautiful black onyx brisket the first time we'd ever cooked one of those. Um, we didn't separate the point from the flat. Um, we threw it on a red Weber kettle at the time uh, and the sauce was a bourbon glaze on the burnt ends that we just sliced off the top <laughs> right at the very end. So, um, but yeah, it mustn't have tasted too bad because our next comp, we got second, uh, third place out of 60 teams in brisket um, using our homemade <laughs> bourbon sauces. <laughs> That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good run from that bourbon sauce though. Yeah, I know. I know. It was quite funny. We don't do that anymore, though. Yeah. So were you, was barbecue something that you grew up with? Like uh, like the, when I say yeah. that, I mean like the, the traditional Aussie barbecue of, you know, 
yeah, bricks yeah. and steel plates and stuff. Yeah, my dad's really big into all different types of barbecue. He's he's massively into like camp ovens and um, he's – I've been camping since I was, you know, born pretty much, grew up on – um, going to Fraser Island every holidays and catching fish and wow, yeah, you know, it's straight over a fire. So it's always been around in the family, um, especially with my dad. He just loves it. So um, I've managed to drag him along to one of the comps as a judge, which was really quite interesting. He quite enjoyed the day, but his flavor profile as a seventy-five-year-old was completely different than mine. Um, <laughs> I was looking at his scores, thinking that was great. Why are you marking that one down? And vice versa, I think. So yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Did he did he find the flavors just a bit too punchy? Yeah, I'd say so. He, he's very meat and three veg man. So um, some of it was a bit too much for him, I think. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I um, my father doesn't really do chili and uh, I've, yeah. I've got a great gumbo recipe and I knew that he didn't like the chili. So I'd, I only put 25% of the chili in and he still had to go out to his caravan and get his antacids after the meal. So, uh, I, Oh, that's funny. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's funny. Some of those generational differences there. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now, um, give us an idea about uh, signature smoke. So you, you said that it's you and your partner sticks. Yeah. Um, h- how did the rest of the team come together? Yeah, so I guess the core team's always been Six and I. Um, and then we've had, we had Mitty, who was our butcher at the time. Um, he joined us uh, for quite a few comps. Um, Stuart, who um, Stuart's now got his own team, Capital Q, but he did come and compete with us last weekend. So, um, and at the moment, we've got um, Scott from Bogan Barbecue. Uh, we've, we've tried to keep it small. We've had a lot of people want to join the team. But I think once a team gets too big, there's more politics, it's not as fun, there's not enough to cook for everyone. Um, so we do like to, you know, try and keep it maximum four people along at a comp, if not three, I think works really well for us. Yeah, that's an interesting point about the politics. It's kind of sad that, um, that, that, that even something as straightforward as barbecue can get so bogged down by, uh, by, by politics. It's... Uh, it's a yeah. little shame. So I I like your strategy there of of just trying to keep it to three maximum four people. When I started competing, the actual rule was maximum four people. So okay. You, you, yeah. You couldn't you you couldn't roll in with five six seven people on your team. Yeah. Um, Too many opinions, I think. So, um, you know, if there's three, we we can take a vote and someone's going to (laughs) win between (laughs) hand-ins. But, yeah, I think for us we just like keeping it small and we like to make sure the people we're competing with we actually really like and have fun with and enjoy their company. Yeah, so good. And so do you like to allocate particular proteins to particular people or do you – like, do, do yeah. you handle all the all the proteins, and then the other people sort of handle the site, like the you know so, doing the clean up and dishwashing and all that sort of stuff? No, we sort of um, we allocate some of the proteins. Um, like we we do all we make all the so- a lot of the sauces and brines all at home. Obviously, before comp, uh, we do as much trimming as possible at home before comp as well, so we can relax and enjoy when we get to comp. Um, Stixy will always do any of our beef. He is just look as my girlfriend calls him, Lord of my brisket. Um, <laughs> so um, he he really focuses on that. I've sort of fallen into always doing chicken. I think it's because nobody likes to scrape chicken skins, including me. Um, so I always do the chicken. Um, at the moment, Scott's really focused on pork ribs. And then a lot of the other boxes, we really all work together as a team. So, you know, we have the run sheets that we do beforehand around timings and things. But, you know, your timings, that they're, they're never – a hundred percent because it depends on how your pit's running on the day. Is it windy? Is it raining? Is, you know, all of those different things. How many times has it been opened during the day? So it's just a guide as such. Um, but as a team, we like to, you know, taste things, make decisions, um, as we go along. So it's definitely a definite group effort. Nice one. Nice one. I like the sound of that. Now your, your pit, I understand. I, I have a bit of a, a, a <laughs> personal love for your pit. T- uh, yeah. Tell us about that one. So our pit is just, I'm in love with it too. <laughs> so um, basically it was made in Caboolture by a company called Sambreco. 
So initially we were lending pits off them because we were running out of space for protein. So I remember Burley Comp, there was seven handins and it was every 30 minutes and we just didn't have enough barbecues to cook all the food. So I literally got on the phone trying to find a, a pit and San Breco were just launching at the time and they lent us a pit and um, the rest is history. We used it for two comps and then after that we just decided that we had to have one. Um, and our pit's been used probably three days a week at least since then. So it, it's constant, constantly used. It's a reverse flow. Um, it's so solid. It just runs. It, it just works really, really well. <laughs> I want yeah, another my, one though. <laughs> <I want to laughs> <think> of- <laughs> yeah, my, my understanding is that um, is that the, the folks from San Breco used to be the folks from Radar Hill. Is that correct? Yeah, so Brett is super talented. Um, so he used to work um, with Robert at Radar Hill for you know, many years. Um, so it's very similar in terms of um, the design, even over the firebox, being able to reverse see your steaks there or cook bacon and eggs on the al- aluminium plate that it's got on top of the firebox as well. Um, so it's just really good quality. And I think, you know, Radar Hills, everyone knows how great they are. And um, it's version 2.0 I guess yeah you can sort of see that uh the the carryover from from radar into San Breco I was so happy when you first introduced me to them and you told me the story of uh of of where they'd come from it was so great to see them out there oh definitely definitely and you know it for me he was great with you know I wanted red and bright colors involved and wooden benches involved and a little bit different um and Brett was really happy to do all of that that's what you want. That's so good. Now you, uh, you obviously you you picked up that pit from San Breco and then you took it off to Kingaroy. Tell us what happened at Kingaroy. Yeah, so and we're really excited actually because Kingaroy Bacon Fest is next month, so August. Um, and Kingaroy Bacon Fest, the last time we competed there, and I firmly believe it's the one of the most level um comps in the circuit because when you arrive, each of the teams are given the exact same proteins. So there's no team, you know, one team spends $500, the next team spends $3,000 on meat. Um, so basically you get there and they give you all, all, all the meat for the comp and then off you go and cook. Um, we did quite well there. We, uh, we were very shocked. We um, got, I think it was fourth in chicken, fourth in pork butt, first in rump cap. And I can't remember what pork ribs came, but um, they're reading out the top 10 and they got to number two and I turned to Stixie and said, Jesus, we must have bombed pork ribs because I expected to get our first top 10 ever. Um, but we actually GC'd, so that was our first GC. Um, and it was, yeah, I think I've never been more shocked in my life that day. So I remember was- watching the live feed come through and just hearing you screaming as soon as they call out your name. <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't get carted to hospital. Hey, like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> didn't see it coming at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that that Kingaroy Festival that 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 is really interesting because it is a uh, it's a Sun Pork sponsored event. I think it's the only event yes. in 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 the circuit where all the categories are all pork. Um, there is chicken and beef. Sorry, just lost my voice there for okay. a second. There is chicken and beef. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah this this year we've got pork ribs, pork butt and pork belly um so which and then we've also got chicken and beef but we don't know yet what what type of beef it'll be i'm just hoping it's not beef cheeks (laughs) i hate that (laughs) why do you hate the beef cheeks oh we had to do that at brisbane comp and oh it's not swearing but they're little snot balls and (laughs) i don't want to eat them i don't want to cook them i don't want to play with them i don't want to do anything with them (laughs) fair enough (laughs) now speaking of the uh the 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 brisbane barbecue festival that was australia's first back-to-back um australasian barbecue alliance sanctioned competition so there was a low and slow comp on the friday night into saturday and then another one from saturday night into sunday how did you find that um, the first word that comes to mind is exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was 
good, but um, it would have been good if it was like a long weekend, I think. So um, just the by the time you got to Sunday night, um, I know certainly a lot of people on our team and some of the other teams are really, really tired. Um, and certainly Saturday night, I remember we were cleaning all our things and I was thinking, well, usually I'd just be, you know, about to crack open a beer and have fun. <laughs> But now we're about to scrape chicken skins and we're about to start um, trimming pork ribs and and all this stuff for the next day. Um, So it was definitely a different format. Um, I'd do it again without without a doubt, uh, but definitely tiring, that's for sure. I I think I should have taken a few days off work after. (laughs) Yeah, I I thought it was really, uh, really interesting, the fact that the the hand-ins got changed up from non-traditional hand-ins on the uh, on the Friday, so there there was the yeah. beef cheeks, there was the the half chicken, which is a very Texan uh, hand yeah. in to do. Um, I I thought that was uh, something that was really interesting. Yeah, I think it meant that that first day of comp, um, a lot of teams felt like they they enjoyed it, but they it was comp now a lot of the time you can almost do it with your eyes closed because it's categories that you've done a hundred times you've got a spreadsheet from the last two years telling you your exact cook times and what you did and how what the process was um but nobody had ever done half chicken or beef cheeks before um so there was a a few teams i know were like i don't know how long to cook these beef cheeks for i'm just going to keep cooking them till they get soft (laughs) like um a lot of youtube videos were happening beforehand of people trying to work out the best techniques for things so that's for sure (laughs) kept it interesting yeah, yeah. YouTube is so glorious. I I remember one particular competition. Um, my my wife had to retire with a back injury. She uh she put her back out on the putting up the marquee, and she she had to go home. And so my my dad came in as ringer, and I said, "All right, you're on parsley boxes." And he said, "What's a parsley box?" <laughs> and uh, I said, "Right, sit down, open up YouTube, find out how to do a competition parsley box." And he sat there and for fifteen minutes watched something on YouTube, and then went, "Okay," tunk, 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 and made the most amazing parsley boxes. Oh, perfect. Yeah. I might have to Google that. We're not very good at them. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, I, I can I can hire him out to you if you like. Perfect, perfect. His, oh, I'd pay, that's for sure. His, his <laughs> rates are very, very reasonable. Oh. Yes. <laughs> so from, from uh, Kingaroy then, the next uh, big win would have been Bundy, which is a hell of a competition yeah. to win. Yeah, so we'd won, you know, quite a few trophies in between. Really impacted, obviously. Oh, it's okay. Luck. It was very impacted. Um, so, um, but yeah, Bundy this year. So that was really good. We, um, were, were suffering a bit mentally barbecue can take it from you mentally. Um, and the previous comp was a comp where we actually did our worst ever. Um, and we couldn't really work out why, <laughs> and that was the frustration. Um, so on the sort of drive to Bundy, we we're both sort of thinking, okay, we'll see how we go at Bundy. I'd actually said to Sticks, maybe we don't know how to barbecue after the, after the last comps results. Like, how? what the heck? <laughs> What's going on here? Um, so, you know, Bundy was quite exciting. It was um, bad weather, which we've had the last two Bundys. So we lost a gazebo. So that's two Bundys in a row that we've lost a gazebo. Wow. <laughs> quite windy at times. But we had... Um, Beef ribs handing in first, which meant not much sleep for many competitors. Um, it was a slightly different format in terms of the hand in times and things like that. But, you know, we didn't think we did a brilliant cook, but we didn't think we did a bad cook. We just thought, okay, well, you know, everything was good. It was done to the right sort of textures. The flavours tasted good. But um, after the previous comp, I was quite second guessing a lot of a lot of it just because of um our previous results but we were yeah very very shocked um we took out first in chicken fourth in lamb um i can't remember was it 10th i think in pork ribs um and eighth in beef ribs i believe something like that and then first overall and we were utterly shocked utterly shocked again so um 
it was a very big party that night, I would say. So any of the competitors that were there, it was um, a great night had by all. The signature smoke tent um, it seemed to fit about, felt like about 100 people in it at one point. <laughs> so, yeah, it was nice to celebrate with all our barbecue family. G'day and welcome to Ozpeak, creating great meals, great memories and flavour born from fire for over 15 years. Born and designed right here in Australia for Aussie conditions, the Ozpeak range is your best friend for the outdoors. Featuring three stoves in the range, there's one built for adventure, home and in between. And with the oven smoker attachment, you'll totally transform your Ozpeak into your very own portable smoker. There's a huge range of genuine accessories such as the rotisserie and char grill, helping you achieve maximum flavour born from fire. At Auspeak, we stand behind our range and 15 years of development and customer feedback has led us here. Dollar for dollar, you won't find better value. Each unit features a solid 3 mil steel construction, zinc plated legs, fully steel press shape and robot welded seams. Every Auspeak unit comes with a 3 year limited structural warranty, so when you buy an Auspeak, you can trust that you're buying quality. Got a project you'd like to work on with the SHC team? Shoot Ben an email on ben at smokinghotconfessions.com and let's have a conversation. Alrighty, so now winning these two GCs, Kingaroy and then Bundy, that's opened up a whole bunch of uh, of, of different opportunities for you. So you've, you're now doing uh, pop-ups, catering, masterclasses. You've got your own kitchen spot at a bowls club. Tell us which one came first and... Give us a bit of an idea of, of, of what was involved in getting each one off the ground. So catering was sort of the first thing that happened. Um, we were constantly just through Instagram and Facebook getting messages daily to come and do catering. Um, and we didn't have a food licence at the time and so we just constantly said, no, <laughs> we don't do that. We don't do Of course that. you did. <laughs> so... Um, it was about, oh, about la last March, I think it was, we decided, okay, well, maybe we should start saying yes to opportunities and see what, what happens. Um, and so we did, we just started saying yes, um, not to everything, you know, there's, there's a lot of random things that people would like. So we learned a lot from people around us, ask them when it comes to pricing and margins and, you know shrinkage and different things like that when it comes to your meats and things and um yeah so we started doing some private catering which was good uh we've worked with a, a few big brands out there um that you know sell burgers and supplied some meat for them as well which um that was great doing a bit of advertising with all, all of them because they they know really what they're doing uh, my favorite is the master classes so we've done a lot of that for work christmas parties where we go in and, and actually spend the day with them and feed them all day and show them all the different tr uh, tips and techniques. And we've also done them at pubs. And, yeah, so it's sort of been a, a progression that way. Uh, this year we did take on the Gaythorne Bowls Club for six months. Uh, we've just finished there. The six months has just finished. Um, and learned to heap, absolutely loved it. And the locals really got behind us. It was getting just busier and busier and busier. But unfortunately, when you both work full time and you're running um, <laughs> a bowls club as well on the side, it's, it uh, takes quite a lot out of you and the family. So we've decided for now that we'll um, stick with the more catering and the masterclasses uh, rather than having the restaurant there full time as well. So Yeah, yeah. fair enough. I totally understand that. It's been fun though so far. Yeah. So let's uh, let's go back to those uh, pop up events and the and the catering. Now you mentioned uh, food licensing before. I know it's really tough down here on the Gold Coast to uh, yeah. to to get food licenses and all that sort of stuff. Tell us a bit about what you had to go through to get that up and running off the ground there. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest issue is the number of food licenses <laughs> you need. Um, so you know we've got. You've got the mobile license, you've got the kitchen license, but then each council requires a license as well. So, you know, I've got um, licenses for Gold Coast, Morton and Brisbane. Um, so they're all slightly different. That's on the mobile side. 
certainly the kitchen license that was directly through brisbane because they're in brisbane one k away from my house here in morton um so you know we were lucky that we built our trailer in a way because we thought that we'd be moving in into this sort of side so with hot and cold tanks on it and um you know you've got to have the separate dishwashing on the side as well um but certainly it was very daunting at the beginning just even i remember council asking for the plans and i'm going i can't draw plans of what my pop-up looks like and luckily my son's an engineering student i'm like he's like i'll do it in cad i'm like yes thank you there you go there you go that's yeah, handy yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah, so we do have, you know, the multiple licenses to cover multiple areas because we get asked to go to different areas uh, with it as well. Uh, it's not that expensive. Like, the it's one of those things you can claim anyway. So, um, but for me, I said I would never do catering unless I had my food licence. I had my insurance, my food license insurance, because um, imagine if somehow people got poisoned and next thing you're liable. Um, mm. So, yeah, I, I know there's probably people out there that do catering on the side without the right certifications, and uh, I just could never do it. I just would, yeah, I went to my accountant, I went to my advisors and said, what do I need? I need every box ticked to make sure that we're doing this correctly. Yeah, right. Okay. So I've, I've got a bit of a question there. What's the difference between the mobile, the mobile license and the kitchen license? Because from what you were describing the kitchen license then, they wanted a CAD drawing of your, your tent setup and your, and your trailer. So yeah, yeah. Wouldn't that be a pop-up like license? Yeah. Okay. So, so there's a crossover there, is there? So the pop-up license, they wanted um, full drawings of what your pop-up would look like when you went anywhere. And then they actually booked an appointment. Uh, this is for Morton. We had to go up to Caboolture Showgrounds and actually set everything up as per what our drawing was to say, yes, we do own all this gear that we've set in the drawing we own. Um, our kitchen license, we didn't need drawings. We were quite lucky. Our kitchen license had, the kitchen was already licensed um, through the club. So we were putting an additional license on the same kitchen. And the kitchen was also owned by Brisbane City Council, which um, you would think if council are the ones signing off on the food licensing, uh, that they would have uh, made sure the kitchen was up to scratch. So um, I actually found the pop-up side a bit more daunting in that regard. So um, just, yeah, and it was the first license we got was the Morton portable license so um i was i thought they were going to try and like say no you're not getting a license so i was quite relieved when we got it <laughs> wow okay and so do you need both uh both a kitchen license and a mobile license to be able to go out and do functions and events like no no you don't um so we've got like the pop-up licenses purely for the pop-ups so you don't you don't need to have both so mm -hmm. oh, okay that sounds much more reasonable. Definitely. It's a good way to step into it. Yeah, I, I was chatting to someone else who was um, using their kitchen at home to uh, to make some sauces and things, and they had to come out and uh, they had to yeah. get their kitchen inspected. They had to rip the floor out and change all the floor and put in drains yeah. in the floor and basically yeah. turn their home kitchen into a commercial kitchen. It was wild. Yeah, no, that that is true. So if you were trying to register your own home address – for that yes very difficult uh the process of from what i've been told we, we haven't done that though so we decided against it we've even heard of people that you know had dogs and things i had to move off premise to get the tick um so yeah and our our home kitchen isn't a commercial kitchen that's why it's been good having our commercial kitchen as well yeah no and doubt about that at all they'll be using it like for some functions and things that are coming up and yeah which is good Excellent, excellent. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then I, I guess that that takes us to the masterclasses then. When did you start doing them? Well, our first masterclass was quite funny. The person might even watch this, we'll see. Um, our first masterclass was, again, someone messaged our page saying, I hear you do brilliant masterclasses. <laughs> and me being me said, oh, really? 
<laughs> um, what were you looking for? Um, and we did a private masterclass for someone's birthday um, and went to their house and actually surprised their husband uh, for oh, his wow. birthday which was great. So he came back with their wife, with his wife, who they stayed at a hotel the night before and got there and 10 of his mates were there and as were we all set up. Um, we had a brilliant day. Like we basically every hour feed throughout the process. So we're showing them. And obviously the first thing we've got to show them is um, how to prep pork ribs because they take the longest. Um, and we usually also have briskets and pork butts already gone, but then we'll show them the prep process on another brisket and pork butt just because of the length of time. Um, but, yeah, they they all really enjoyed it. And from there, basically one of the attendees there um, then um, got us involved with um, the Gem Hotel down at Jake as well. So uh, that's where our next masterclass is in three weeks or so, the 23rd, I think it is, on the Saturday. So. And I think for us, we we just tell people everything. Like we've had people along um, from varying degrees. So we take five barbecues. We take the offset. Uh, we take a Weber Smoky Mountain. We always take a Perilla. We always take a kettle. And then we usually have a GA there as well. So we want to show people how to use tools that they have at home um, a, to the best of their ability. So And we get people really involved as well, show them, okay, this is, you can come and pull the um, backs off these ribs, you know, get the silver skin off for us and all, all the things that we don't want to do. We show one person how to do it and then get someone else involved. And, um, yeah, it's a really good day. Yeah, very nice. That sounds like a great day out. And what a great idea for a birthday present, just like a surprise yeah. b- a barbecue yeah. masterclass. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. And that one, yeah, certainly opened up quite a few more doors just from people. Everyone we do seems to open up doors um, from people that attend that then recommend us to somewhere else. Yeah, and you, you mentioned that you were doing some um, some uh, uh, corporate events as well. How did that happen? Um, the corporate side's been just a natural process for us as well. Um, so we've had, you know, some where you know logan steel and we've had some for pest control companies and that one was quite funny because it was a really hot day and they had a blow-up pool there so half the time the people were sitting in the blow-up pool whilst eating their food while we were showing them different things um and corporate wise i come from a corporate sales background I've, so I've had a lot to do in that side of things. So it, it's just been a really natural progression. And I do know a lot of people in the food industry and hospitality industry that, um, you know, have really supported Signature Smoke right from the beginning, like really going, yeah, we believe in what you're doing and we know that you are trying to do your best out there. That's very handy. Uh, very Some some very good skills there as well that you're able to bring across in there to uh – to get people over the line and confirm those bookings for you. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, a lot of fun too. <laughs> yeah. So I guess now that that brings us up to the to the bowls club, what a great yes. opportunity that was. Yeah, so that was pretty full on. Um, so it, it came about, um, we thought, as everyone knows, the last 12 months has been pretty full on. Um, I work in my normal job in corporate sales uh, for business travel accounts <laughs> so you can imagine demand has changed um it's, it, and it's been a bit quiet <laughs> oh yeah it has it has it's starting to change again a little bit at the moment but we thought we would like to um have a bit of a test to look at whether we move into getting our own restaurant um, and thought this was a good way to look at it. So uh, initially we committed to the six months there uh, with the thought that um, potentially myself and Sticks probably wouldn't have had work or any job by March this year. So we're throwing ourselves in 100% to, you know, really give it our all and look at potentially transitioning into having our own own place full time. Um, but, you know, it, it was um, very interesting. I, I still don't know how to bowl, though. <laughs> so I, never, <laughs> I never got time to learn that one. 
um, great space. I mean, we could have seated 140 people inside and we could have up to 250 outside. Um, so seated wow. 140 was brilliant for us. So, you know, we could take bookings left, right and centre. We could, um, and we were selling that out um, with bookings. So nice. it was, yeah, yeah, really, really good. Um, and the whole family were involved. I had my son um, doing burgers out the back. My youngest clearing tables, uh, the middle one um, taking people's money at the counter. Um, so we ended up with about seven of us working there because uh, Friday, Saturday nights were just getting pretty full on. <laughs> yeah. And so was that open every night or just on the weekend nights? Just Friday, Saturday nights is what we did. So, yeah, we could have done a bit more um, if time permitted. But, yeah, we really focused just on that Friday, Saturday night and um, the locals in, in the area. Like, it was just huge how much the locals supported us. We had people come 10, 15 times. It was just nonstop. <laughs> so, yeah. That's awesome. You need one of those... Uh one of those loyalty cards where they get punched each time and then they get the 10th, uh, the 10th true. rivers free or something. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. No, we, uh, and Stixie has nailed fried chicken finally. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> so, nice. After practicing for about the last 12 months, um, I would say anyone who ate his fried chicken uh, always came back and ordered the fried chicken. It was, it was delicious. I just loved it. That's so good. So did you guys, like, did you check out a bunch of different bowls clubs and then approach them or did you, was that through no, a personal connection you found that? No, we um, did a pop-up there last year because um, the previous operator um, was away for the weekend and asked if we could do a pop-up one weekend. Um, and so we did a pop-up there and it actually went quite well. Um, and it's really close to home. It's less than a K from home. Like, oh, wow. Know, you could almost walk there like it's that close, which we thought was quite handy as well. Um, and when the previous operator was leaving, um, the club then also um, contacted us at that time and asked to have a chat. And, yeah, so we went in and had a chat and had a chat um, with the previous operator as well. So, yeah. Very nice way to get in there. Very handy indeed. And a great way to... Uh to work off some of that barbecue if you're walking to and from the uh, fr from the venue. Oh, and the steps we were doing per day, because my job's a lot of laptop work, um, but Friday, Saturdays, you know, we, we were punching out 20, 30,000 steps in a day. It was crazy. <laughs> awesome. Very nice. So what's coming up next then for, for Signature Smoke? Where do you go to from here? Oh, it's a good question. I mean, for us, we've got probably, you know, we've got probably two more comps this year, King Arroy and um, Aussie World potentially, and Invitational's not happening. Um, we're probably going, we've got a, we've got weddings booked. We've got, um, so we've got bookings from now until November already. Um, wow. So, yeah, between weddings, private functions, um, so these are either mainly in people's homes. We've got a couple of things we need to do down the club as well that we committed to that uh, we'll, we'll go back for. Um, but I think, you know, a little bit of this and that, we'll never say no to an opportunity. Like we're open to talk to anyone about anything um, and see if it could be something that's a right fit for us. So, yeah, we're eyes wide open really. <laughs> You're listening to the internationally awarded Smoking Hot Confessions podcast with massive barbecue nerd, Ben Arnott. All righty, Sonia. So now we're up to the uh, third segment of the show. And this is our, our lesson for the listeners and the viewers. So you're going to, uh, to oh, okay. That's an interesting <laughs> face you just pulled there. Um, so, so you're going to share some some, uh, some knowledge with us. I'm going to just uh, sit here and sip on my uh bottle of water and uh, you're going to impart some wisdom to us all. Okay. Um, for me, I think one of the biggest things, like we've only, we haven't been in barbecue for long at all. Um, when you look around with some of the teams that are out there, we, we really are quite new to the scene. Like we started in that 2018, 2019, we could only, um, we competed, you know, but 2020, we didn't really compete this year. We've had quite a few comps. I think one of the biggest lessons that I've learned is to just ask questions. 
just be inquisitive. Um, know that you don't know everything. So I, you know, all the teams on the circuit, I don't think I've ever come across a team that won't try and help someone around them. And I think the reason we are where we are from a barbecue perspective, from some of our results perspective, is by going and asking questions. Like um, certainly even with the Bowls Club, you know, I've got on the phone to Drew over at Mafia, had a big chat to him about it. Do you think this is what we should do? What are the watchouts? What do I need to look for from, you know, a food perspective? I know Sticks gets on the phone now and then to, you know, Christian over at Primal and what the heck are we doing wrong with our pork ribs? Um, So I think some teams that I've met like to think that they know everything and are really stuck in their process. I think if you can be adaptable, you can always grow in what you're doing. So for us being adaptable, asking people around us, trying something new, <laughs> like just throwing your hat in and trying something new is, yeah, I think it's it's really key, especially with flavour profiles. Like they keep changing what's popular out there um, and your processes. I know when I've been at comps, I've come home and I may have just taken one little thing off another team. They've said, oh, why don't you try this next comp? Oh, yeah, why not? Let's give that a go. So, and ask, I mean, I, I'm more than happy if there's new teams on the circuit that have any questions at all, just send me an inbox, like say, hey, got any tips on this? And if I do, I'll tell you. If I don't, I won't. Um, yeah, so that's probably my main words of wisdom is just get out there and ask and don't be afraid to fail. I mean, there's been times we've failed dismally. <laughs> Um, I won't mention where we came in our half chicken at Brisbane last weekend. <laughs> so, but you know, you've got to just keep going and keep trying and try something different. I think that's probably it, Ben. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, there were some great nuggets in there for sure. So you basically, uh, you were talking about asking questions, be inquisitive. What do you think are some of the most important questions that you've asked other people in your learning journey? Oh. Like what are what are some things that, that 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 you've asked that have really made the biggest impact on you is probably a better way of uh, yeah, yeah. putting that. Um when it comes to catering at the beginning, we were really naive around understanding the financial side in terms of understanding food wastage, understanding um, you know, how much you need to cook for certain volumes of people. Um, That made a huge difference to us, asking the people that have done it a lot. We learned a lot. Otherwise, we could have really hurt ourselves financially in the beginning and um, not been able to make profit because of just going out there and going, oh, we know how to cook. We can just do this. Um, So... Asking how to, you know, avoid some of the risk in that situation. When it comes to comp, I mean, for us, we were lucky that we've made some really close friends in the circuit. Um, So we've actually, you know, we've had cooking days with, you know, Christian and Matt from Primal and and things like that, where we've, we've cooked together and things like that and asked, do you think this is a, good way of doing it and um even with scotty now who's on the team gone to his place and had a bit of trial and error on different things so with comp it's more around um we get people almost after every hand in from other teams to try our hand ins and we ask for feedback and we actually want the feedback. So if you tell me that was really too salty or that was really too sweet or um, we really want to hear that. We don't want to hear, yeah, that was good. We want to hear the crit- critique on it. So um, because, you know, I'll, I'll sit there after handing. I remember at Bundy um, I tried Rusty's chicken. Rusty, um, he's got first place chicken like three times. So I made sure I tried his. I went and tried uh, my cue for you. Um, Chris, his chicken. I he mean, does he's some bl- banging chicken too. Yeah, he 
banging chicken. He was next door to us. Rusty was opposite us. I tried both of their chicken and I made sure I did. <laughs> so, um, and that was about getting different ideas and different flavors and not necessarily the whole technique as such, because everything's online. You can find all the techniques easily, but just that different tastes and things. So yeah, asking Rusty, we, we did try to do drummies. We've never handed them in. We tried that at um, Oki, Um and we were asking why do our skins keep splitting when, you know, we weren't doing enough turns in the process we were sort of putting them in and hoping for the best <laughs> so um but we've never handed them in we've we've just decided that we don't think that's something for us at this point in time fair enough yeah they, yeah. they can be quite uh, quite tricky to do there yes um, so what then do you think has been the the biggest area of growth that you've experienced so where do you think you've improved the most <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking our first comp, our lamb hand in, um, we did parmesan herb crusted lamb cutlets. Wow. <laughs> um, and they weren't, they didn't, they didn't score very well. But, you know, so our last comp in Brisbane, we just got fourth place lamb. At Bundy, we got third place lamb. Um, so I think that's been a huge growth for us in terms of um, getting that right. Um, not taking as much gear as we used to. I remember the first few comps we used to bring pretty much the whole house to compete. Um, now we're pretty basic, although we did take a caravan last comp, but that, that's another story. <laughs> that looked awesome, though. It was. It was good. Really handy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just taking the basics of what you need, um, I think we've we've grown um, big time in, in that regard. So, yeah. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Now, you, you also did mention before about, um, about uh, accepting your failures and turning them around into something else. What, what yeah. tips do you have for, for turning a negative into a positive like that, for, for, for learning from a failure and then turning it into a positive outcome? Um, I think with the failures that you have, and every team's had failures, that there is not a team on the circuit that hasn't come last place in something um, at some point in time. Typically, I think the first thing I like to do in those situations is try and assess, like, okay, is there a reason why this failed? <laughs> so that... You know, that assessment, that self-reflection, I think is is key for us so that we don't do it again. I actually take notes on my phone, each comp of each hand in, what the actual times were, what the processes were, what the failures were. I, I call it learnings on my phone. So learnings, like um, it might be that the burnt ends needed a longer period of time um, this comp or learnings the chicken skin wasn't as as crispy as previous comps um, maybe we're running it not as hot or I, I literally every comp will write down a different learning from each hand in so I find it important to be able to understand those learnings and then you know ship the ship the ship a little bit don't change everything though one one bad result on a hand in doesn't mean you need to change the whole thing it may mean just a slight slight tweak to something that you're doing right yeah i i like that just minor adjustments little bit by yes. little bit yes very definitely. cool now we've we've got a couple of questions here i think it's probably from your your biggest fan uh, cuz he's he's put a couple of questions in here uh, matt redman um uh, he's he's got matt. one up here yeah um, are you planning on doing any more collaborations similar to the Miss K's collab? Um, definitely. Um, g'day, Matt. Thank you. And he's one man that has been really open with helping Signature Smoke. Um, I'd have to say all the boys at Primal have been brilliant, Matt especially, Mr. Chicken. Um, yes, I love collabs. Um, and we have had some discussions with some other brands about different things. Um, but I think. For now, there's nothing locked in right this second, but 
yeah, we are, are keen to, to do some more. A lot of fun, those. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Um, and his next one, I, I'm not sure if this is a, uh, if he's having a bit of a play with you or not. He wants to know if you have any tips for him on chicken. <laughs> Well, no, um, not not after tasting his chicken at Brisbane. Um, <laughs> so Matt's, Matt's given us huge amounts of tips on chicken over time. Um, and certainly Matt's chicken is just, I love the way Matt's a person that will reinvent as well. Um, so he doesn't always, you know, sticks with the same flavours and things. We often try Matt's chicken and um, he does some beautiful chicken. I think my only tip on chicken is I need to get bigger thighs. My thighs are always too small. <laughs> I see Matt's and I have thigh envy, <laughs> which is an odd thing to get. <laughs> That's a, that is an odd thing to hear, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, all righty. So now that's probably a good point for us to start uh, to, to round up this episode of the show. So I'm going to throw the studio over to you now. Give some thanks, give some praise, give some shout outs to people that have helped you along the way and tell everybody where they can track you down on the internet. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I just want to thank anyone, everyone out there that's helped us. Like um, we've been helped massively by Drew from Mafia, Michael Page at Heavenly Hell, like his constant re- um, engineering of different sources, different rubs, um, just to chat on the phone about different ideas. Like he is the king of flavour, that man. He's unbelievable in that regard. Uh, we've worked a lot with um, Brad from Fractured Wood. He's, um, you know, he, he's a great guy. We've used his iron back for many years. Um, I believe he's just sold the business. So there's probably some changes coming there as well. Um Love our pit from San Breco. They've always uh, looked out for us. So hopefully one day we'll have need to get a bigger pit overall. Um, my main man, Stixy, <laughs> keeping it fun, keeping it real. Um, for us, the c competition, we want to have fun with it. We're not trying to be number one in Australia. Uh, we don't have the time, the patience or the money to do so. So um, the amount that we compete is, you know, we want to do it well. We want to represent the brands that we're aligned to that, you know, we're friends with. And yeah, I just want to thank everyone for, you know, uh, accepting this crazy crew of signature smoke where we're <laughs> certainly, um, sometimes a bit of a motley bunch that has uh you know a lot of fun while we're out there doing it so yeah so thank you everyone thank you ben for your support as well um and if you do want to get in touch with signature smoke you can either message through our instagram our facebook or our website so we get all of those messages and happy to talk about anything at all that people may or may want to do with the brand and hopefully next year we'll get to compete in the u.s um, which will be a dream come true. I'm dying for that. And uh, I'll be hitting up your listeners, Ben, beforehand to borrow barbecues. <laughs> So. <laughs> I don't think that'll be a problem at all. We got a uh, we got quite the global network happening now. It's uh, it, it's so good. Well, look, thank you very yep. much for your time this morning. I, I I really appreciate you coming into the confessional, and best of luck with everything in the future. Thank you, Ben. We'll talk soon. And there you have it, family. That was Sonia from Signature Smoke. How much fun is she? And I've been at a couple of competitions with her now, and I've got to tell you, their site is always one of the most fun sites to go hang out. And, and as she said, go ask questions. They're always willing to share their knowledge, as we saw in this episode here today. Now, before we do close out, I just got to remind you about the announcements from the top. So a big shout out again to our podcast partner for this episode, Ozpig. If you are looking for the out for the ultimate outdoor camp cooker, do check them out. They've got grills, warming plates, rotisseries, uh, smoker um, attachments, basically everything that you love to cook at home in your backyard, you can now take out into the bush with you and you can uh, have all those delicious things while you're out enjoying nature and living life, which is an awesome opportunity. Um... If you are new to the uh, barbecue world, head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com. Tons of how-tos, recipes, tips, and of course that free ebook is out there as well, The Beginner's Guide to Real Barbecue. Big thank you to those people that have joined us in the Smoking Hot Confessions barbecue community on Facebook today for uh, coming in and uh, ha having all your comments and questions in there for, for Sonia. And if you'd like to be a part of the next episode, make sure you come and uh, come and check that out as well. And if you are watching the, the replay on the socials, 
help us out, give us the likes, the shares, the comments. That's really useful for us and it helps trigger the algorithms and the platforms will then spread our message and now Sonia's message even further and wider. And that's all the time that we do have for today. So until next time, take care of each other and keep on queuing. Thanks for listening to the Smoking Hot Confessions podcast. Head on over to smokinghotconfessions.com for recipes, tips and Ben's own confessions. <laughs>